is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And welcome to worship with Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. Today at worship, a sacrament, Holy Communion. You just heard Maria Henry sing, as we gather at your table. So we invite you to gather your communion elements at home so that you can participate in the ritual when that time comes up. But we have a sacrament, a sermon with a survey embedded in it, several songs, some supplications, which is a fancy word for prayers, uh, and perhaps a surprise. I'm running out of alliteration. Um, but we always worship with an expectation that God will show up in the prayer, in a phrase, in a song, in a sermon. We want to be surprised. Today we take a fourth look in our six-week series at Remembering the Sabbath to Keep It Holy, Vital, and Life-Giving. The title of this service is Sabbath, an Antidote to What Ails Us. I'm looking forward to preaching today because the last time I preached was Sabbath or die. That was harder. So with all of that, here's a couple of announcements. Uh, we had our annual meeting last week. Um, we approved a mission plan, which is what we call a budget, um, that looks to be very um, full of life and, and have opportunities for ministry. And then we heard about our pastoral succession plan as I figured out that I am, have about 100 days left, a little less, at Prince of Peace before we get an interim lead pastor and begin the search for our next lead pastor. Uh, Breakfast Church, put that on your calendar, February 19th in the morning. We're going we're gonna to celebrate worship and breakfast at the same time in the Fellowship Hall. You can bring a dish to share. It's a pure potluck. Um, and there will not be a worship upload that week of the 19th for those who are in our online congregation. If you can make it to church for a wonderful meal, we encourage you to do that. As we take a moment of silence to prepare for worship, ponder this question. Where does life hurt? Amen. We worship in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we call to worship with this poem, Enough. These few words are enough. And if not these words, this breath. And if not this breath, this sitting here. This opening to life that we have refused again and again. Until now. Until now. Let us pray. God of the Sabbath, your son Jesus, the great physician, made the broken whole and healed the sick. Touch our wounds, relieve our hurts, and restore us to wholeness of life that our hearts begin to beat more and more like your heart. We are listening. We are grateful. We are yours. Amen. From the Old Testament book of the Torah, Exodus chapter 20. Here are all the words God spoke. I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of Egypt. That is the land where you were slaves. Do not put any 
gods in place of me. Do not make for yourself statues of gods or look like or look at anything in the sky. They may not look like anything on the earth nor in the waters either. Do not bow down to them or worship them. I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. I cause the sins of the parents to affect their children. And I will cause the sins of those who hate me to affect even their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. But for all time to come, I show love to those who love me and keep my commandments. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will find guilty anyone who misuses God's name. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. Do all your work in six days. But on the seventh day, it's a Sabbath to honor the Lord your God. Do not do any work on that day. The same command applies to your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, and your animals. It also applies to any outsiders who live in your towns. In six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But he rested on the seventh day. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God's beloved people. At the beginning of this six-week series on Sabbath, you were invited to take a short, maybe five-question, yes or no survey. Yes or no. Things seem to bother me more than they should. How do you answer that today? Question two. Prayer has become chore-like. Something to cross off my to-do list these days. Three. Making my mind up is hard, even about simple decisions. Four. Impulses to eat or drink or spend or crave are harder to resist these days. And five. I'm more likely to favor short-term gains in ways that will leave me with long-term costs. Now, the more that we answer yes to these questions, the probability of finding the concept of Sabbath looms to be very interesting for us, even healing. Why healing? Because quite frankly, the more times you answer yes is an indication of just how tired you are. Fatigue. There's a, there's a kind of fatigue that attacks our body when we stay up too late and we wake up too early, when we fuel our day with caffeine, not an option, when we hurry and multitask through our day because there's no place in our schedule to absorb a delay. Our bodies grow weary. And then there's the kind of fatigue that attacks our mind. When doing more makes us feel holy and limiting our activity does not help us to feel holy. When we're bombarded by information and social media all day long, when we carry around mental lists of errands not yet done, when we try to push unpleasant emotions under the surface like holding beach balls underwater at the swimming pool, our minds grow weary. And then there's the fatigue that attacks our will. So many decisions to make. What kinds of foods? We're trying to optimize what kinds of foods would make us feel best and most healthy. What tasks at work will bring us the most success? What entertainment options will maximize our happiness? Our will grows weary with so many choices. 
And if these categories of fatigue aren't enough, they combine together and they, the, the joint effect is to make us feel distanced from what we love most about life and creation. And this is soul fatigue. So when things be, are beginning to feel the most urgent, most pressing, most despairing, this is not a time to panic or talk faster or run harder or strive more. On the contrary, this is the time to slow down, even stop, be still, exhale, rest. Why? Because this pause reorients us to the one who loves us. This is what the Sabbath is for, to teach us to live in time differently, deeper, more in sync with the rhythmicity of life. In our can-do culture, where we find it very hard to say no and very easy to say yes, where the ability to do many things at a high speed is the mark of a successful human being, at least one day in every seven, we are to pull off the road, park the car in the garage, writes author Barbara Brown Taylor. We are to close the door to the tool shed and turn off the computer and stay home, not because you're sick, but because you are well. Talk someone you love into being well with you. And just notice when you stop how things grow without your intervention. Watch things evolve without your help. You see, practicing a Sabbath, a pause, is practicing how to trust. What if we just admit it? There'll never be enough time. Even when we get out our day planners and we strip away all the inessentials, even when we focus only on the things that are good and nourishing and important, there still is not enough time. But that's not where our hope lies in having enough time. Our hope lies in that trust practice of Sabbath, in trusting that there is enough grace in a day. So rather than looking at this unfinished task and seeing something that we failed to do, see instead what that unfinished task represents and see it with a graced lens. For example, when you look at that stack of unanswered emails, see instead the trip to the pearl with your grandchildren for ice cream. When you look at that pile of unsorted and unfolded laundry, see that delightful novel that fed your imagination last night. Our journal question this week in our Sabbath journal is, how could Sabbath help heal our world? As Pastor Anna pointed out last week, the Sabbath is for everybody, your family members, your servants, and even the animals, and even creation. How is Sabbath healing? Here's a couple thoughts. Sabbath creates a space and time for being rather than having. It sets the table for deep encounters through stories and prayers, friendships and laughter. In restful places, you and I can develop a beginner's mind as opposed to the expert's mind. Been there, done that, nothing to see here. See, a beginner's mind is supple and it's willing to be led. With the beginner's mind, a color crayon can be a food, or a Q-tip, or a rocket ship, or an interior decorating device. The point is, a beginner's mind is willing to be surprised. It's healing 
when we pause and we remember the power of small things. Jesus was constantly finding heaven within and among us. Heaven's like leaven in a bread. It's like a mustard seed. It's something small and precious like a pearl in a child's hand. It's the right touch, the kind word. So small, but it brings exceeding happiness. Sabbath is a time to drink deep from God's well of little blessings. Let me ask you, what is a small thing that recently brought a shift to your heart out of proportion to the gift? As you're trying to remember something like that, it's often something visceral. You get a feeling by this little thing and how it changes you. The last two weeks, we were doing baptisms on Sundays. The babies were six months old. Best age to baptize. Why? Because they grin at you the whole time. And of course, they were grinning at Pastor Anna and me in our wonderful baptismal service. But it lifted me up, these little grins. A little tiny grin changed my outlook. Another way that Sabbath heals is to spend it with friends. But friends who are a delight to you, who mirror mercy toward you. We all need friends that model what enough is and mercy and sufficiency and see it in us. Who is this community in your life that can see these things in you? One more thing. Try this. Can you remember this list? Volkswagen, elephant, mountain, apple, lake. Now try this list. Furious, content, ecstasy, heartfelt, spiritual. Which list was easier to keep up with? For most of us, it's the first one. Why is that? It's because our minds process information, process things quickly. But our heart needs time to process what it is given to know. Technologies go the speed of our mind. Our hearts need one day in seven to catch up with our lives in order to feel what is true and beautiful and necessary. And it all starts with the commandment, remember. Living Sabbathy is hardwired into us. We already know how to do this. We already reflect our God who rests. All we have to do is trust. A poem by Denise Levertov. As swimmers dare to face the sky, as the water bears them solely, as gliding hawks rest on the air, and the air supports them wholly, so would I learn to freely fall into your deep embraces and trust no effort ever earns your all-surrounding graces. Amen. Shining star
Our worship continues with the prayers of the people. And we thank you for submitting the prayer requests, for taking the time to send the email or fill out the bulletin insert on a lament, a Lord have mercy prayer, and also for an alleluia prayer, for a thanksgiving, a celebration. It is, these are the prayers and the voices of our faith community. God of Sabbath, grant us your peace, for we've made peace with what does not give peace. We've learned how to be peak consumers and expert competitors, but our souls seek gratefulness and graciousness. We want to have courage in difficult times. We want to live with a sense of joy and purpose. This week, the laments of your people at Prince of Peace include the news of an aggressive cancer in Grandma and metastasized cancer in a friend. Laments over the brutality and violence in our society. Laments about infant death and a mother grieving her child's overdose. We lament those recovering from strokes and the epidemic of loneliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And remind us what we already know how to do but have forgotten. Hollow out in us a space and time in which we will find ourselves and find peace and a whole heart and the will to reach boldly for the abundant life for ourselves and the whole human family. This week, our prayers of celebration include peaceful moments spent in sunshine, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We celebrate good news as it happens, deep breaths, new beginnings, music and generosity, a successful brain surgery and subsequent joyous homecoming. We celebrate a fresh layer of new snow, laughter in our home, the privilege of being able to keep Sabbath. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As our foremothers and our forefathers did before us, we pray with hope in your strong and gentle name. Amen. For our offering this day, we mentioned at the annual meeting last week that between our, our regular giving to our general fund and our tuitions that we collect for our preschool and our special gifts that are given to um, the church, that we in 2022 were a million dollar church. And it comes from so many sources and so many and for so many good purposes. We, but we thank you for your generosity. Also, if these prayers that you heard today sound real, sound like they touch you, sound like a neighbor you may have heard of, send in your requests. And as a community, we'll offer them as the body of Christ in this place. Many prayers, one voice. At this time, I invite you to take out your communion elements at home and prepare for the meal. We remember the significance of this event, of gathering around the Lord's table, because on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to take your bread, your cracker, the body of Christ given for you. And in the same manner, your juice or your wine, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now this body and blood of our risen Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you have put your life into our hands, and now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew and remake us. What we have been is past. What we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Amen. Oh, hear the words of the Lord. Know that you are holy and honored, precious and loved. The blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, guard your going out and your coming in from this time and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep it.